Ah, uh, that was lame. Okay. What was that? Is? Hey, what's hey. up, guys? Hey. Archive and Anthony here. Say hi, Anthony. Hey. <laughs> I hey. did like the strange, almost feminine. Oh God. Anthony, Anth uh. Anthony, just tell them what you're doing, man. Just tell them so they're not totally confused. Um. Uh, I'm playing Just Cause 3, guys, and I just blew up a gas station, and I'm dead. Oh my god, I just flew in the air. Literally <laughs> my way. Okay, just, just continue, Eric. Okay, okay, Anthony. Well, yeah, he got Fallout, uh, not, wow, I'm still talking about Fallout. He got Just Cause 3, which we've been waiting for yeah, for since guys. 2010, I believe, Anthony. You're the genius on this. Oh, yeah. But anyways. Oh, yeah, I think, uh, March 2010. March 2010. A long time. But, uh, that's a video for another time. I will get that eventually, Anthony. And we'll, uh, I'm sure there'll be a multi Woo! multiplayer mod will come out, just like for Just Cause 2 eventually. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That's gonna be boss. That'd be awesome. But anyways, we'll play that. But right now, we are here today to play, well, not we, I guess just me. Anthony's, uh, just gonna be accompanying me vocally, verbally, uh -huh. in this. Um, but this oh. is the Beginner's Guide. This is the Beginner's Guide. Um... For those of you who don't know what this game is about, it is the sequel. I guess not really the sequel. It's just the uh, it's the next game from the same people that made the Stanley Parable, uh, and it has a lot of a lot of the same concepts. Um, and the idea behind the game is like if you looked at all of these different things that one person created. Uh, the story takes place, I believe, within. You're, you're a person looking at another person, like, inside of another person's computer, and this is just based on the trailer. You, like, open a folder, and there's all these different files titled different things, and the idea is if you go through and look at all of these different things that this person has created, would you be able to figure out who this person was and what they look like and uh, what they thought about kind of thing? Could you figure this person out by looking at these different things? Um... So yeah, that's the whole idea behind this game. I guess we'll just kind of get more into it as we go, but let's just jump right into it. Please make sure audio is on. It is definitely on. Controls. Okay, W WASD. By the way, Eric, I'm going to have to go to bed Hi in like there. 10 minutes. Thank so you very much for playing your The Beginner's Guide. My name is Davey Reedon. I wrote The Stanley Parable, and while that game tells a pretty absurd story, Today, I'm going to tell you about a series of events that happened between 2008 and 2011. We're going to look at the games made by a friend of mine named Coda. Now, these games mean a lot to me. Uh, I met Coda in early 2009 at a time when I was really struggling with some personal stuff, and his work pointed me in a very powerful direction. I found it to be a good reference point for the kinds of creative works that I wanted to make. So just to start you off, this is, I think, the first game he ever made. It's a level for Counter-Strike. You can walk around here, by the way. And uh, mostly it's just Coda learning the basics of building a 3D environment. But what I like is that even though he starts from the simple aesthetic of a desert town, he then scatters these colorful abstract blobs and impossible floating crates around the level. And of course, it destroys the illusion that this actually is a desert town, and instead this level becomes a kind of calling card from its creator. It's like a reminder that this video game was constructed by a real person. And it kind of makes you wonder, what was going through his head as he was building this? This is what I like about all of Coda's games. I mean, not that they're all fascinating as games, but that they are all going to give us access to their creator. I want us to see past the games themselves. I want to get to know who this human being really is. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So, it's 2008, Coda starts making these games, and he never releases any of them. He doesn't put them onto the internet, he just makes them and then immediately abandons them and they sit on his computer forever. And I think he really understood this image of himself as a recluse. Uh, at one point, he jokingly renamed his computer's recycling bin to Important Games Folder. So, you know, this was just how he worked. He tended to crank them out one after the other without even really pausing to try to understand what he had just made. Until suddenly one day, he just stopped. In 2011, that was it. He made his last game, and then he hasn't made another one since. 
And that's why I've taken this opportunity to gather all of his work together, is because I find his games powerful and interesting, and I'd like this collection to reach him, to maybe encourage him to start creating again. And if the people like you who play this also happen to find his work interesting, then I'm sure it'll just send that much stronger of a message of encouragement to Koda. So thanks for joining me on this. If you have a particular interpretation that I haven't mentioned here, or if you just need to get in touch, you can email me at d-a-v-e-y-w-r-e-d-e-n at gmail.com. Okay, that's about it for introduction. Let's take a look at Coda's first proper game. As each game is loading, I'll show you the date that it was completed. This first one was made in November 2008. I don't know if he's going to talk again. Oh, okay, so this was a very long introduction, but um, I, I may have been completely wrong about what this game is about. Um, because if that intro was uh, genuine and was meant to be like outside of the game, uh, I don't really know. <laughs> I just lost my entire uh, step ahead here, so I have no idea what we're going to be stepping into. But I'm sure he's going to start talking the second I step out this door, so just enjoy the more important people talking in this world. Oh! Oh, this is going to be too loud. This game is called Escape from Whisper, and it's one of the more generic games you'll see from Coda. Walk down the fiery path, that seems like the right one. Can click to fire the gun. There we go. Maybe that's a little bit easier on the ears. Oh, you can actually fire the gun. No sound. But you can, if you want to, just for fun. I guess there is a... There is a... Actually, there is. Listen. Yeah, <laughs> there is. I bet there's going to be people. Oh my god. Oh my god. It kind of looks like this game was abandoned mid-development. For instance, you have this gun, which you'd think would indicate that there are supposed to be monsters or enemies somewhere, but then clearly there are no enemies anywhere. You can't even reload the gun when you run out of bullets. But ultimately we don't really know. Maybe Koda thought that actually it was complete the way that it is. And I think that we should talk about his games for what they are, rather than for what they're not. I love how you can see the bottom of the universe from this room. Sexy universe bottoms. Something tells me I'm supposed to go this way, but then again, I seem to have a a tendency Apparently to make the, the wrong space decisions. Station has a labyrinth on it. I uh, sure I don't know. There's really no reason for it that I've ever been able to discern. So in the interest of time, I'm just gonna skip you on past it. Aha! But I solved it anyways, nerd. Okay, this is the part that's interesting. The game has this narrative about the whisper machine and how it has to be turned off, and then you get to the engine room. Hey, you there, in the engine room. You could save us all. That beam is powering the whisper machine. We could disrupt it by introducing a great enough heat signature. If you... your body could... So Coda created this game. It's so much to ask. Yeah, there's a female the voice actor. Would you do it? Could you give yourself... I have to kill myself? This is gay. <laughs> I can't keep a straight face and say that at the same time. Alright, well, uh, cheers to suicide. Not this really, not though. This is a branching point, unfortunately. Let me pause here for a second. What you just experienced, stepping into the beam and then dying, is probably Depressingly. what Yoda had initially intended when he was developing this level. But when he first compiles and plays it, something goes wrong. There's a bug somewhere. And this is what happens instead. I have to kill myself again. The irony. The irony of it. Oh. Oh, there's the labyrinth and the whole map and the... Can I move? The beam causes you to start floating. And this is an important moment for him. Because yes, this is technically a glitch, but Coda identifies something human about it. 
like how small it makes you feel in the face of this larger chaotic system. Or this floating could be the afterlife, a peaceful place, juxtaposed against all of the hysteria that Juxtapose, juxtapose, juxtapose! I, I don't even know. Juxtaposed! Uh, I have no idea what he was thinking. I just learned that word cool today. That after making this, something lodges itself in his brain. He wants to do more of these really weird and experimental I thought designs. I'd never hear that word in my life. So he stops work on this and moves on to a stream of tiny little games that go in all sorts of directions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first game he made after leaving this one behind. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like down below and subscribe for more content. And I'll see you in the next episode. See you later guys.